Alright, what up everyone? Uh, welcome to another episode of The Zono Podcast, guys. I am so, so, so sorry. I haven't posted in so long. Uh, I think, like, I haven't posted a video in maybe a week, uh, two weeks, two to three weeks, actually. Um, yeah, no excuse, man. I've been, bi- I've been lazy as fuck. Um, I've been really trying to get interested to the World Championship, but honestly... It was super disappointed overall. Like I'm gonna talk a lot about the finals uh, as like a second part of this podcast, but I want to go and um, just like talk about the world championship in general. Uh, we have one where NNU like didn't play very well. TSM not making out of groups. Klein now having the worst group and still like doing things that are really surprising, but like still like. Having a Korea versus Korea final really affected me and really affected my interest for League of Legends as an esport. Um, I think that looking forward, uh, it's just like, like f- the way I think about it is that like why would I watch LCS? Why would I watch like LCS NA and EU if you know that their level is just like in another like Koreans and like Chinese player are in another dimension. Like that's how good they are. Like they play a different game. And they make us, uh, us as like North American, European people. Uh, I really relate to those two because, well, I grew up in Europe and now I'm in NA. Uh, so I kind of like, and I used to shoutcast NA when I was in Europe. So I relate to both and I say us as like NA and you. But we, it makes, it makes, it makes us look bad. Like we look ridiculous in front of SKT and all those like uh, Asian uh, regions uh, out there. And I think it's very sad. I think it's very sad that we've seen another Samsung Galaxy versus SKT T, uh, SKT uh, T1 final because uh, at this point, I don't know if this is going to be ever different. You know what I mean? And I think it's really smart for Riot Games to put the finals in an Asian country. I think it was like in Shanghai. Uh, it was in China. I'm not sure if it's in Shanghai, but um, the finals were taking place in China in a beautiful stadium. Honestly, like what a venue. Uh, there was like Like, did you see the number of people that was there? That was fucking insane. Like, really insane to see. So, it's very smart if you're at games. Actually, I was very surprised someone tweeted at me that uh, 97%, like 98%, which is like huge, right, of viewers are actually uh, Asians, like for the World Championship. Because, I mean, for me, in NA, the first matches, at least in group stage, started at midnight. So I could go from midnight to 5 a.m. with content. So I used to watch like um, the first two or first three and go to bed at like 3 a.m., which was already insane. But you know what? Like, World Championship is once a year, so you might as well do it, right? Uh, and there I watched the final. So if you guys don't know, uh, spoiler alert. I mean, I don't know if there's any spoiler for this because it's already happening. Everyone is talking about it on Twitter, Facebook, etc. But uh, Samsung Galaxy won 3-0. So... I'm not, I don't want to spend this podcast like talking about, uh, I'm just going to go straight to the finals. I don't want to talk about how TSM sucked, uh, really, like, TSM guys, like, fuck, man, like, what the hell did they do? Like, I feel like, I don't know, man, it's like, what was the point anymore? Like, if you're Bjergsen, like, what's the point anymore of playing if you're not going to perform, you know what I mean? It's like, you can't perform against Koreans, like, you can dominate one region, okay, yeah, it's cool, but, like, come on, man, like, we need to go next level there, like, it's been so many years, TSM has been on top, they can't reach that next level, it's crazy, man, it's, it must be super frustrating for them, but for a fan or for someone that follows, it's like, come on, man, come on, like, and you see their games, they're, like, they're not even great, like, they don't, you don't feel like they're wanted, like, it's, it's kind of awkward sometimes, like, you feel like, sometimes you feel like teams don't give a fuck. I know it's probably wrong, right? It's probably wrong, but sometimes they're like, yo, we went out of groups, or we won against, like, whatever, and they're like, okay, we did well, whatever, right? Like, it's okay. Like, uh, It's like in Europe, I see that a lot, is that we made it out of groups, we made, we, we reached the goal of making it out of groups, because this is insane for a European team to make it out of group, or any team to make it out of group, so we good, we can chill. If we win, why not? If we don't win, whatever. People, fans will be okay. And this, I talk a lot about, um, in my, in my video, why NALCS is the worst and why it's our fault, because we accept that. Like, we think it's okay. Like, oh, TSM can out a group. Whoa, that's so insane, dude. Whoa, that's crazy. Bro, no. TSM should win words. Like, period. Like, they should just win. So, whatever. That was just a parenthesis. Let's now talk about the finals. Uh, Samsung Galaxy 3-0, SKTT1-0. Uh, uh, 
very overall my thoughts were that it was a very shitty best of five honestly like there was a no match uh, two storms game one was fucking like impressive Samsung Ga so it's a it's a mix of Samsung Galaxy being impressive clean as fuck not a mistake uh, and SKTT1 doing dumb dumbass mistakes like just dumb stuff very weird positioning in team fights for most of the so for most of the team fights in game uh, one two and three um, we'll talk about this we'll talk about every game but just overall the best of five was so bad like as a show uh, I think about the people that travel to China to watch it live. I think of the people that st I stayed up at night. I stay up until like 4 a.m. to watch this thing. Um, it's just like everyone wanted to see at least four game. Like five game would have been insane. It's the utopic stuff. Like you want to see this as uh, an entertainment business, as the hype, as blah 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 blah. Seeing a 3-0 in the finals is so bad, guys. It's like you don't want to have that. That was the worst scenario. But when you Samsung. Honestly, the challenge of SKTT1 was not big, man. It was not scary. It was not scary. And maybe Samsung made it look easy. Maybe SKTT1 had some issues. I don't know what happened. But honestly, those those games were super, uh, not even long. Like, they were like 35, 36 minutes in average. I think it was, uh, it was 37, 35, and 40 minutes. So, we didn't have insane, insane long game. I mean, the meta doesn't push games to the very late game, but still. Like, that was pretty... I'm I'm disappointed. Like I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. The thing is that, uh, so yeah, SKTT one won like three times the championship. It was supposed to be almost like a rivalry stuff. So it was to be like yo the clash of like the clash of uh, titans type of shit. Uh, so first game, guys, um, we had uh, I think it was Samsung on the blue side, SKTT on SKTT, SKTT one. Let's say SKT. SKT on the red side. Uh, interesting composition from uh, from SSG. The Kennen to counter Dagnar. Very to QV man, QV MVP. I hope he had MVP. I didn't, see, I didn't see who had MVP. Oh, it was Ruler. MVP of the series was Ruler. Oh, I'm very surprised. I thought it was going to be QV because I thought QV was insane. Honestly, QV was absolutely ridiculously good. Like, whoa. Whoa. Like, wow. And... So yeah, QV first picked. Um, no, no. So wait, I just want to see the bands as well. The bands are interesting. So Syndra, Talia against Faker banning this. A lot of ADC bands and SKT. They wanted to ban Ruler with the Kali statue Stana. They also banned a lot of like tanky, like Galio, Shan, Jarvan Four. Man, this first game was brutal, guys. If you want to see a very fun game, if you want to see how ridiculous SKT was in this first game, it was weird, man. So. S SSG put it um, Kennen to counterpick Huni on his Nar, and SKTT1 took Faker on Cassiopeia to counter the Malzahar of Crown. Uh, it's not a pure counter, and I wouldn't say that because Malzahar has a lot of weapon, but Cassiopeia is really good against Malzahar. Like you can wait, and once you have the opportunity, you can really like the damage is insane. And Malzahar really can't do anything sometimes. Uh, what else? What else can I say? I mean, this game, guys, 37 minutes, it was a perfect game. Uh, at the end of the day, um, SKT only got one turret out of this game, which is really insane. It was a bot lane turret. Um, and yeah, man, like, what do you want me to say? <laughs> like, Huni 010, zero, zero, uh, Peanut 020, zero, zero, Faker 020, zero, zero, Bang 010, zero, zero, Wolf 010. Zero, zero. Like, literally a perfect game. Almost perfect game. They did lose a turret. Um, it was not like this game was just a, a result of having um, QV doing so much work with Kennen. I think stuff went down at the Baron where QV TP'd and started to blasting everyone. And it was pretty, pretty insane. Bang didn't have a good time, to be honest. Uh, we'll talk about this. But all throughout the series, he was really, really not in his uh, plate or whatever. I don't know what happened, but I feel like he didn't play to his full potential at all, to be honest. Um, but yeah. Let's move on. Ambition on his uh, Zac, insane. Ruler, insane. Quirgigi on his Janna, absolutely insane. But I, I was sure that QV was going to get the first uh, the MVP, to be honest. I'm, I'm very surprised. So moving on after this first game. So what you know is that nobody is worried about SKT. So I'm going to take a sip of water, just one second. At this point, guys, the analysts were not scared at all. They were like, okay, maybe it was just a hiccup. SKT1 is the best team in the world. Uh, best franchise in the world. For so many years, they play so many teams. They play in so many situations, <clears throat> uh, 
and they they can do it. They can do it. Like they can come back. Like the 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 skill of adaptation from one game to another is insane, um, and they just make stuff work. Okay, so nobody was worried in the French shoutcasters and the English shoutcasters. People were like, okay. Maybe it was a problem with like um, some mistake at the Baron, and they cannot come back or whatever, whatever. But you have to know that Samsung gameplay was so clean; like everything was like it looked like a perfect composition of music. It was like no false, no false note. Just like everything was perfectly rhythm. Everything was like perfect. Like the game was just perfect to watch. It was impressive League of Legends. It was just wow. The show was not there, like there was not like amazing team fights back and forth, whatever what a, a viewer wants to see. But as I'm sure, like some coach analyst or like you guys, if you're like challenger or diamond, you could have seen that that it was just so clean. So game two, guys. This time we have um, we I think we had SSG again on the blue side. I'm not I'm not entirely sure, but this time we had Q so this is the time where I didn't get. Uh, no, no, this is not, no, no. I'm talking about the game three. Okay, so this time Huni decides to play. So Huni has very, it's whether he plays a tank or he plays like um, a, a bruiser, so like Yazoo, for example. And it's sometimes really like, I feel like it, he's just better on tanks for some reason. When you put him on Yazoo, on stuff like Jace, I don't know, I'm not a fan of it. I'm really a fan of Huni when he plays a tank and he he does really well in laning phase and then in team fights. I think it's it's pretty cool. But they decide to put him on a Huni, uh, a Yazuo, a Peanut uh, Gragas, Faker with the Rise, uh, Bang again with the Varus again, and Wolf with the Lulu. Then we had QV with the Gnar. So Gnar is a really good pick against Yazuo because obviously, like you can jump out, you can like you can really do something in a Mega Gnar, while Yazuo has to get close to you and like it's. I mean, overall, overall, what SSG was going to do is. They wanted to do something with the uh, Jarvan Gnar combo, which is insane because now you can stun people on the on the R of the Jarvan. So the combo is insane, uh, insane. <laughs> I like what <laughs> the way I said that. Uh, Crown again with Mazahar, uh, very very good Mazahar. He really he made me want to play him with Mazahar. Like very very interesting. Core GG and Ruler again with the Zaya Jana bot lane. So this game was very. It was, I don't know, it was a, vi first of all, I think, I don't know who got MVP, I wish I had the uh, information, I know it's, it's not in front of me, but, Ambition with his, uh, Jaren started really, um, I remember that, so SKT tried to invade, and they got the flash on the Jarvan, and basically Jarvan didn't have a flash till 6 minutes 60, or 6 minutes 30, where people start having their level 6 and their ultimate, so, off the bat, it wasn't starting well for Ambition, but Ambition started to make some crazy ass moves, uh, especially in the top lane with QV doing crazy stuff. Then in the bot lane, uh, really disappointed by Bang again. Like Bang performance here, said game two uh, was absolutely like mediocre. Like he couldn't do anything. He really couldn't do anything. So it was smart to put Faker on Rise because Faker could move and TP and do his stuff uh, to help around. But I've never seen an SKTT one so Faker dependent, if if I could say. So Faker had to go top, he had to go mid, he had, he had to go bot, he had to go everywhere just to protect his team and do things and make stuff happen, but obviously sometimes it just doesn't work. And when you play, when you lance against a Malzahar that can push so hard, um, so fast, um, it is hard, it is hard to manage everything. So Faker did his best, honestly, like he played so well, I mean Faker is just being Faker to be honest, Le legend, hashtag legends never die, uh, but... It was just hard for him. I feel like it was just a pain for him. Like he, just like the babysitter who always has to take care of someone. Like uh, if Bang was not doing well, bot lane always needing help. Top, Huni was trying to make some plays. It's It kind of worked at first, but then QB got fed some kills and that was just over. QB was just too tanky and Yazu was just like staying on the turret. Uh, but then when they started grouping, I felt like SKT1 looked like a good team. Like the combo was obvious. The R of Gragas, instant R of uh, Yazuo. Uh, or like like the Lulu bump or um, stuff like like the the combo was just like very thought out right, but because they had such a low range team with like Lulu, Varus, Rise, Gragas, Yazuo, the combo of QB and Ambition was just too insane to manage. So when you when you start to have like Baron dances, when you start like people gathering around the Dragon Pit, it was just too easy for SSG to convert that into a great team fight. So. 
this, when this game was over, it was 2-0 for Samsung, and we were like, okay, we just watched two stomps against SKT T1. And the funny thing is that people were still not worried. People were like, okay, Samsung is hella good, but we don't know what Koma can do. Koma being the coach of SKT, if you don't know. Koma is always the guy who's like, yo, we are losing 2-0, 2-0, 0-2, back against the wall, let's just make it happen, and I was hyped, when 2-0 was happening, I was like actually hyped, like can you imagine SKT T1 coming back, I was like yo, I'm gonna order a pizza, I'm gonna stay up all night till like 6am watching this shit, I'm so down, I'm so hyped, what up, what up, what up, uh, but before that, I watched the draft, I was like okay, let's watch the draft of game 3, let's see if there's actually something planned, and we'll see how it goes, game 3, was for me the the riskiest the riskiest the most risky the most risky draft uh, of of all. So the reason for that is that I told you on the game too how faker how SKT was just so faker dependent and has never been ever since the the World Championship started. I feel like uh, and they decide to put him on a on a karma. So. What is interesting about Karma is that it does a lot of damage, it can poke, but it's also like the utility purpose of it. Like it's not a burst mage, it's not like a mage like, uh, it's not like a, it's like a, it's not a regular AP mid, right? Uh, it's supposed to be off, it's called an off support mid laner, which is uh, like you stay in the back lane, you DPS, but you also shield, you build, you build the ardent, the the item, the ardent that puts uh, attack speed on your shields, and you you play with bang on Tristana. You try to push the Tristana at level 18 uh, with like five items, and she just becomes unstoppable, and she just three shots everyone. So there's two things that surprise me about that. The draft is okay. I mean, we can get over it. Faker on a Karma isn't what I prefer. I like Faker when he carries the game. He destroys his mid lane. He makes difference on the side lanes, and he just he just like puts it out there like that's it it's over like I'm faker watch me kiss the ring I'm faker kiss the ring but it was not like that so right now the, the statement of faker on karma is literally putting responsibility on bang uh, bang being one of the best ADCs in the world obviously but fortunately last time he was not feeling it like I don't know what happened but he was just not feeling it and he was just bad, man. Like I don't, like I, I, I don't know how to phrase it. I really don't. I don't want to sound like, I don't want to sound like a douche or whatever. But he was just bad, bro. Like so many R's were just like awkwardly placed. Like he was bumping people who were about to die, saving them from dying, turning around team fights with a bad, bad positioning. Like bank positioning all throughout the game. Especially with Varus, who doesn't have a dash, and you don't have, you cannot do a mistake, basically. He was just poorly, it was just poorly done. Uh, so, Bang was, I tweeted, like, Bang is the LVP, like, the least valuable player. But, he can blame, he can take the blame for this finals. Like, he didn't do his job as an ADC, uh, even when he had Faker on a freaking Karma. Like, you had Wolf on a Leona and a Karma by Faker. Like, you have a, a support, you have two supports, one being Wolf and one being Faker. Like, what up? W what up? How can you not perform with that, you know? But it's also, again, guys, it's also, it goes two ways. It goes, like, uh, it's getting not performing well, but it's also props to Samsung. Samsung killed it, dude. Like, they killed it. They, they really, like, they played so well. Like, props to them. They really, they were extremely better. Like, they were just better than SKT, and there's no doubt about that. But I would have expected more from, like, the champions, like, the, the title of champions, the three-time champion, whatever, uh, to fight a little more and being a little smarter in their plays. Uh, Karma, so Faker building Rabadon instead of Lindries, uh, in, against, like, a Shogas, Tejuani, Malzahar, Lulu, uh, hell of HP there. Uh, I get the whole, like, you want AP on the Rabadon to put better shields, but at the end of the day, the poke from a Karma with Landry's against a Shogaf, against an amb uh, Ambition, Sejuani, would have done better difference. Plus, it gives you more HP as a Karma, so you can, you're most likely your shield others. Uh, so, like, those small details. Like, the fact that Karma had a six, the six items she wanted to build was um, Landry's. She already had, like, Void Staff and all that stuff, but no Landry's against so many HP, like... It just becomes the most cost-efficient item. So, I would even build Lindries instead of, like, Void Staff, to be honest. But, those are just details. Like, those are just details. But when you could see the plays, uh, 
there was like a Baron team fights I wish I could show you, but honestly, I, maybe I'll do it in post production. But it's just like you see Bang in the Baron pit, like around. The, it's a team fights going around in the Baron in front of the river in front of Baron, and you have Bang literally bumping out. Uh, I think it was Ruler, right? Or something like, or like QV, or maybe like a, just a guy. Like he just bumps a guy with his R. He has like twenty percent HP, and he just runs away after. And you're like. All the SKT2 one, like, they, they spend their cooldowns on this guy to kill this guy and have an instant 4v5. And Bing just R's him like this. And he just, poof, he flies away. SKT doesn't have any cooldowns. SSG turns around and fucks them all. So, it was just so sad to see that. It was like, what the fuck, man? Bing, like, if he just destroyed his R button off of his keyboard, he would have performed so much better. Um, it was crazy, dude. So I know I've been talking a lot about Bang, but it's deserved, man. I think he really, he was the reason SKT T1 couldn't even take a game because his placement, his team fights, everything was just so sloppy, like so, ugh, like just hard to watch. Like it was hard to, like Bang is the most, is a talented guy. Maybe he, maybe he had a headache. I don't know. Maybe something happened, but I just feel like performing like this in front of so many fans during a final, maybe he can take, he cannot take the stage, but. I don't know what happened, man. I don't know. I, I just, I'm trying to question this because I feel like when you talk about esports, I feel like you guys can't see me. Okay. Uh, when you talk about esports and how people perform, uh, I, I wonder if this is the same as in for sports, right? Like, I'm sure uh, Yushin Bolt sometimes has bad runs. Michael Phelps has bad swims. Uh, I, I'm sure it's something that happens, but bang. Not performing so well makes me think of that. Like, how do you build consistency? Like, they obviously work hard, man. They obviously, like, play every day, all day. Train super hard for this final. All throughout the season. Even though they didn't have their best season. Shit happens. But, I wonder if, like, things goes on in his mind to be, like, stressed up like that. Maybe the arena was just so big. There's so many people in this arena. That was insane, dude. Um... I feel like maybe losing two games like that was hard on them. Maybe getting stomped on the first game just, just takes something mentally on them and just like make them not believe. But I don't know. I don't think it's true because SKT has so much experience, so much experience, and the leader Faker can just, just is just so such a good leader and such a good captain. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out what what had happened. Like because obviously this this like this is not SKT. That is not the SKT I know. Um, it was just like so sad to see that so yeah as a show i think it was a disappointment to be honest like the the show was kind of boring 3-0 like who wants to see a 3-0 for a world finals it was the worst time to do it as well like with all that like i don't know i feel like all the events that were going on with blizzcon the paris games week like there was not a lot of viewers even on the french channel there was i think there was like uh 500 000 on twitch which is okay, I guess. Um, but, yeah, going forward, man, I don't know. I don't know if people are going to tune in, man. I don't know if, if Korea keeps dominating. I don't know if people are still going to tune in. At least in Europe and in NA. Um, NA doesn't like to be last. Like, NA, the culture here is that if you're not, if you're not first, you're last. And having your team not winning World Championship... It's it must be hard for them. Like it just it just it must be hard for them. After that, maybe no, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe NLCS. Maybe, maybe people don't watch words. Maybe people don't give a fuck. They just watch NLCS. But I doubt it. I really doubt it because it's it's such a cool show. Um, but yeah, man, World Championship 2017 is over, uh, and we had what we expected. To be honest, um, I guess not. I mean, three zero is really impressive, but. As like an entertainment, it was kind of like, it was kind of shitty, man. Yeah. I don't know, man. I. Sh it's like, how many years are we gonna accept that, dude? Like, how, how many, like next year Koreans are gonna win again? Like, how, like this is gonna kill League of Like, I know it's a huge statement to say that, cause. League of Legends isn't going anywhere in the next, like, five years, I think. Um, at least. And, but, uh, I don't know. My own take on this is that I don't want to watch NLCS anymore because I know that compared to Korea, they just suck. 
So I, w- I would ever watch LCK, uh, build maybe like being a fan of like a, a Korean team or like an underdog, because it will still always be better than SK team, uh, the, than TSM. Sorry. Um, I'm trying to figure it out, man. I'm trying to figure it out if are people gonna still watch it in NA? I mean, I'm 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 really curious of knowing that actually. Like, so if you guys are an avid USCS viewer, NLCS viewer. After watching this words and after again watching a Korea versus Korea final, are you guys like, are you guys gonna watch LCS next year? Like, are you guys gonna watch LCS next year? Because I feel like now that we watch the Premier League, which is Korea versus Korea, if I can take like an, if I can like express a soccer analogy, a, a soccer or football analogy, whatever. I feel like now I watch the Premier League, I don't want to watch fucking college uh, football anymore. Like, I don't want to watch high school... Like, TSM is high is high school League of Legends. Korea is literally, like, professional League of Legends. Um, once you watch Koreans, you can't just go back to, to high school and watch people play video games. It just... For me, it doesn't make sense. Um, so, I don't know what TSM has to do. I mean, they're so late in terms of micro management, in terms of, like, just mechan- mechanics... A laning, team fighting phase, like everything, they're just behind on everything. To be honest, like they don't have, there's not a single thing they can dominate on. Maybe they need to be carried by the meta. Maybe they need to do something. But bro, like, come on, man. I don't believe in it. I don't. I don't believe in TSM. I don't think they'll come back. I don't think they'll succeed in League of Legends at a word scale. Like they're so good in NA. That when it comes to beating Dignitas, when it comes to beating Cloud9, when it comes to beating CLG, they're good, the matches are good, but then it's always, like, it's, it's, it just, like, you just repeat the story again, like, you just rewind the tape, and you see Korea, like, smashing us, and TSM had a good group, man, honestly, like, fuck, man, TSM had such a good group, and they couldn't make it out of groups, Cloud9 made it out of group. I don't, like, it's like, what, what is happening, man, what is happening with League of Legends? So yeah, I'm just going on this little rant, I guess, like, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. It's over now. Kind of disappointed. Kind of, like, surprised, though, that it was a 3-0, honestly. Like, 3-0 SKTT1. Um, SKT1 not being at the top of the performance at all, to be honest. Um, I'm sure they're going to review that. Faker crying uh, at the end of the best of three. Uh, really uh, heartbreaking. Like, it was... Um, it's hard, man. It's hard to watch that, because you're like, this guy, man, works so fucking hard. I'm pretty sure he plays when the others are sleeping type of shit. Like, I'm pretty sure it's what's happening. Um, the MVP is going to be Ruler, apparently. I didn't see that, but it's right here in front of me. Uh, Ruler, who played Zaya uh, two times, and one time, uh, game three, he played Varus with his core GG, who played twice Jenna and once Lulu. Um, great KDA. He died two times in this best of three. Um, good job to him. I thought QV was going to get it, to be honest. Like, his Shogaf... Um, Gnar and Kennen was insane, but I accept that. I think QV, uh, I think Ruler was really good as well. So thank you so much for listening slash watching this podcast. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm wishing you a great, great uh, week. Uh, probably I'm going to talk about next week. I'm I'm going to try to, um, I want to go back to talking about PUBG or maybe I'm going to do some like gameplay videos. Uh, I'm not playing anything right now, to be honest. I've been playing a little bit of PUBG with my friends uh, from France, uh, my friends from college. But I've been working on um, on esports a lot. I've been working on uh, like it's like my last year of college, so I'm trying to trying to get serious a little bit um, because this YouTube thing uh, isn't really going anywhere. So uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, but it's okay. So I'm trying to I'll try to get a video done every week again. Uh, I need to be I need to stop being lazy as fuck. But I want to find something cool. Like I want to find something cool to do, guys. Uh, so if it had to, if if it has to take time, it will take time, uh, and that's okay. So thank you for listening, guys. I hope you're doing well. And I'll see you for the next episode, guys, next time. Cheers.